Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. This is part two of TIG Welding High Strength Steel, and so I'm going to do a little quick review here. Parts are made out of high strength steel. They're getting a lot of machining work done on them, and because they're high strength steel, we had to do a little preheat on them, and we talked about how preheat slows cooling rate and drives off moisture and hydrogen and is very necessary on steels that have enough carbon content to harden or a carbon equivalent of enough uh, carbon to harden if they've got other elements like chromium and molybdenum and such. So I preheated the parts also just to allow the, the pin to fit in the hole because it was a pinch fit. The pin wouldn't even go in there until it, the, the base was heated up. And then got everything up to 500 degrees, a little above 500 degrees and verified it with a handheld IR gun which you have to be kind of careful with on shiny surfaces like this, but I was able to find little areas that, that seemed to stabilize. And then I got a tack weld on it, and then I turned it over and ran a bead on the other side just to kind of help build up the heat and help maintain the heat so that I wouldn't do any welding under 500 degrees. So I'm using my TIG finger prop, prop here on the 500 degree metal, and my finger is not getting hot. And I'm running this bead in here nice and slow nothing's going quick here because I want travel speed to be nice and slow to avoid quick cooling and avoid any cracking that might happen I ran some practice pieces without any preheat and fast travel speed and things like that so I did I did learn that it, this was definitely possible to put cracks in this metal if you weren't careful so that's why I'm going along at such a nice little slow slow rate And so we did that last week. Again, there are 20 of these to do. I'm just working through one of them. And then after the, after the pass on the, uh, the back side, a quick check to make sure that I was over 500 degrees. And then I put the first pass, first pass on, on this side. Now this, this part two here, again, I'm still doing review here, but we're going to do the second pass and then also talk about some other things. This is the first pass. I'm leaving the rod in the puddle. This is called the lay wire technique leaving it in the puddle just because I'm using about 160 amps here and it's plenty hot to uh, to flow metal down in there even with rod in the puddle just seemed like an easy way to do it but also showed uh, an, an alternate technique which is probably more common which is just dipping in and out of the puddle and watching that front of the puddle wet into the root of the joint and I'm feeding I'm pushing just a little bit of metal in there because I have a, a required leg size to accomplish here on this fillet weld and I need to put the, make the first pass big enough just so I don't have to carry so much metal on the second pass. So that's where we left off last week right there with one pass done and while it's still good and hot, while it's still above 500 degrees, I'm putting the second pass on there to get the required leg size which is 5 16 as uh, the weld symbol on the drawing called out. Now the second pass here goes nice and slow just like the first but but with just a little weave and just a little pressure on the rod to push a little filler rod in where it wants it again using 160 amps I'm using a foot pedal but I'm full pedal at 160 amps and the reason for that is because I tried using some higher amperages oftentimes if this was just mild steel I might use as much as 200 or more but with this metal, I, I, you know, I, I had some cracking issues by, I'm guessing the reason was from mixing too much of the, uh, of the low alloy high strength steel into the weld metal, increasing the carbon content and hardenability of the weld metal. And so therefore 160 amps did not get enough, get that much dilution from the base metal and worked a lot better and still was plenty hot enough. It's just a little slower. So again, I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to achieve the 5 16 fillet weld leg size but with two passes that's the reason for two passes here you can see the the uh, CK flex lock torch flex lock 360 torch water cooled version I have hooked up there because at 160 amps all of my uh, air cooled TIG torches just get kinda toasty after welding uh, like one of these kind of hard to hold in my hand so water cooled is definitely uh, the way to go on something like this I generally leave air cooled torches hooked up I prefer not to have to listen to the water cooler I've got kind of a loud one it's an, a really old Miller water cooler 
and uh, just a lot of background noise so I like to use an air cooled as a rule but it just takes me about five minutes to hook a water cooled up for jobs like this I'm giving you lots of looks I shot lots of films so I might as well give you lots of looks right watching the toes of that well just just kind of pausing at the toes making sure that they kind of wet in and I don't have any any little cold looking areas and that one is done we'll get a little close up of that in just a second you can see right after welding it it's still it's a little over 500 degrees I was able to camp out with the TIG finger on that thing without without my fingers getting hot so it came in really handy all right we're going to talk for a minute here about minimum preheat versus minimum interpass temperature versus maximum interpass temperature what they are and where they apply all right the minimum preheat that's the minimum the minimum heat it can be before you light up on it and the minimum interpass is you need to have it at a minimum before you light back up on it but on stainless steel like this particular job here this is a big chunk of stainless steel you almost never need a preheat on stainless steel just won't harden there's no there's no concern about having it hot enough before you start welding on it but you do have what's called a maximum interpass temperature which a lot of times is 250 degrees or 350 degrees and it won't hurt a thing to let it cool down to almost where you can just put lay your hand on it because letting it cool down prevents the heat build up and prevents it from being at an elevated temperature for an extended period of time and that maintains the corrosion resistance and stainless properties of stainless by by not allowing it to stay in a certain elevated temperature range for a long time so stainless is a little bit it's a whole different thing you you want to you want to let it cool and you, and you don't want to get it too hot whereas low alloy steels like this you want to make sure that it's hot enough so I've got a 500 degree preheat and a 500 degree minimum interpass temperature on these low alloy steel parts but on stainless steel even if it's thick stainless steel like this is a solid chunk 300 series stainless no preheat and usually a 250 maximum interpass temperature that means you want to let it cool to below 250 before you light up on it and won't hurt to let it cool way down past that now this is the, the low alloy steel part with the black oxide finish on it and all 20 of them are done now and this is a reminder that you can prop with a TIG finger on 500 degree metal so go grab one now all right we'll see you next week